So I spoke about detachment, and I don't think I gave a reason as to why you want to learn how to detach from the external. And all that means, and there's many ways to describe it, but a, a, another way of des describing it is by saying, I'll, I'll give two ways, learning to not emotionally respond, or say emotionally react to your environment. Um, and I mean reaction. There's a difference between acting upon it and reaction. Uh, reacting to your environment can be impulsive. And we don't want to be uh, we don't want to be compulsive or impulsive in our in our doing. We want to ease our way or fall into states instead of um, instead of f putting any kind of force upon the world. We want the world to naturally express things. And another reason why you'd want to learn how to detach is because the God that we're seeking is not outside of us. He doesn't dwell in a temple or in any building made by human hands. It's, he's not outside of us. The ones outside of us are made by wood and clay, but we're not talking about a God that way. We're talking about a being that's creative. That's what, we're, that's what we mean. And this being seems to be inside us. We are some, there's something inside of ourselves that allows us to see events uh, before they happen. We can give reality to these events. We can enter into these events. This thing within me, I can fall asleep tonight and dream up a new world and become awake in it. You know, you can become awake inside dreams and tell other people in those dreams that they're in your dream. And they may look at you like you're crazy, but you can't deny it. You know you're sleeping back at home, but you're dreaming. So this thing in me creates another world. It makes things flesh. And that's what we mean by praying to the only thing that exists, the one who creates my good and my bad inside me, the one who creates the peace and the, uh, the war within me. It's all by one creator. And the reason why that is important to understand is because if you did start detaching from your external as as if it's as if it's a god that you need to plead with and you said you go internally you'll see that there's nothing to be unworthy of because as i said in my in the root of all that it's all made of the same substance is that if you see that the one creator is creating the good and the bad inside me then i don't need to be compulsive or reactive to my thoughts I can control them in a way. I can dictate where they go right? because I don't have to have the bad. I'm the creator of the bad. I can, you know, the moment you start to feel, you know, the wish fulfilled, the bliss will come overcome you and realize that you created that bliss and you keep letting it overcome you. You become its victim. You start to feel overcome by feelings of genuinely having what you desired. So you no longer desire, you feel that you have it. And that is something that I find important to understand too. Is the uh, is that the scriptures tells us that's whatever. So whatsoever you desire, believe you have received, and you will. And this is a testable claim. And you know we must learn how to feel that we have. There's one condition imposed upon us, upon man, and that is to believe, and and it's to believe in something in specific. It's to believe I have it, to believe I am it. Um, that is the one condition imposed upon us is to believe and I think for so often I've when I would imagine I'd get so caught up in the how and in the when even when I wouldn't realize it I would still be thinking of space and time while I would imagine yet my imagination showing me the end result the inner man sees the end result of it sees manifestation only the inner man doesn't see the how it just shows you the the end result and the question is do you believe you have that the inner man's the one who needs to believe he has it and you know i'm not called to devise the means and i have to admit to myself that i don't know how things will be i've had manifestations happen where i could have never guessed that I was going to bump into so-and-so and that would lead me here and lead me there, you know. So I don't try to devise the means. And I don't know when. I don't um, necessarily 
worry about that. I am not told to worry about that one. I'm told to accept I have it, and having it is a present tense. So I don't know how and I don't know when. And for me to argue with myself about it is to argue about things I do not know. So I have to drop them. I have to drop concepts of time and space while I imagine. I have to let go of what I know and believe that I have that. And when you do actually believe you have it, when you fulfill that condition, a bliss will overcome you. If you truly let go of the voice trying to ask you how and when, if you let go of it all and accept it, when that bliss comes, you can either run from it or you can embrace it. And the more you do that, the more you'll see the, the when and the how will just naturally drop from your mind. You'll be more concerned. Your intention will change and you'll want to imagine simply to fulfill yourself. And as much, how much we use this, you know, this claim that whatever you desire, believe you have and you will, to the degree we test this is up to us. So how much I want to give myself, how much I want to have inside myself is up to me. It's realizing that it's in consciousness is where I'm lacking it. When I realize that, then, it, then you can fulfill it. It's by seeing that I don't lack anything externally. I ignore the senses. It's the inner man who's lacking, who has believed in loss and has believed in lack and therefore experiences it in imagination. That's the one I need to save. That's the one I, that's me. It's my awareness of being or my awareness of having. It's a being who has instead of a being who's, de who's desiring. So I stop, I leave the state of desire and move to the state of fulfillment, regardless of the senses. I ignore the senses. I, you know, ignore the facts of the world and I just assume that I have it. I don't do anything other than that, which I've always done. I've always spent a lot of time thinking about how and when, and even when I would think that I'm not thinking about it, I would be thinking about it. It'd be in the back of my mind. I never truly let go of it and accepted the fact and admitted that I don't know. I don't know when, don't know how it will be done, but I know what I do is I have faith that I'm praying to a God to which all things are possible to. And I believe that I'm praying to the only God who's created any kind of trauma in my, inside myself and any kind of peace inside myself. I've spent time in meditation realizing that I do create both of these things inside myself, that I'm the one who's um, being mean towards myself and I'm the one who's being nice. And once I saw that that's, there's only one creator for this duality, that there's there really is only one creator for all these things. And that has, you know, made me feel a lot calmer, was about realizing that those thoughts that I deem bad stem from the same substance as imagination. Then I don't feel unworthy of simply rearranging imagination to something lovely. And that's all I must do, and believe that I have that. And... And a question I often get was, is how long should I imagine for? And the answer I give is, imagine until you feel that you have it. However long that takes. Sometimes it can be, sometimes I can go through, you know, thinking about, you know, cer contemplating certain ideas and some, some thoughts might scare me, but I realize I'm creating it and I let it go. And then I find myself somewhere else in my mind. I give myself what I want. The next thing I know, I'm feeling bliss. And that might be in five seconds, it might be in an hour. But I, I give myself as much time. I don't really think about the time. I think about feeling that I have it. That's my intent. So we don't have to feel unworthy of anything within ourselves because it's all coming from one place. You know, the uh, something we tend to do that we don't realize is, you know, we create things that are really within ourselves that we're told that we're the temple of the living God. And then we create physical temples and we say God dwells in there. But it's really a representation. Every temple that's built, you know, by bricks, they're just representations of really what's within ourselves. That there is a God inside a temple, but it, this is us. This is the God inside this temple. And we can, as Neville says, that we're here to, we're here to learn imagination. We're here to practice it. And the way that I've learned how to practice it 
is actually, it's very simple. It's believing you have it. But that takes a lot of removal of a lot of ideas that have been given to us about ourselves and about life. So this removal of reason that, that it seems to be blocking me, the m removal of the facts being thrown at me, if I allow myself the freedom to believe that I have it, things definitely change without a doubt. If you persist that you have it, um, then your reality should shift. I don't see any reason why not, because you're genuinely shifting inside. You shifted in consciousness, and you'll find yourself with that shift not emotionally reacting to the external or not emotionally reacting to certain thoughts that you normally would have had a negative reaction to. They won't bother you anymore because you're not in that state of mind anymore. You're not in that, you're not a victim of your thoughts. You know, you're a creator now. You've, you, can, you can go to sleep tonight and find yourself in a dream and be a victim of the dream. Other times you can find yourself being conscious in it. And every time that I find myself conscious inside a dream, I, I can imagine things and they happen instantly. Now, of course, I would love to mimic that here. <laughs> but I think it's showing me that we really do create with our minds. We create with what we're given, and it's hard to accept that to be the case. Because it takes, it's, as Neville says, it's a lot easier to blame people. It's a lot easier to blame the world for what I don't have inside myself. And something that I've had to learn is that before I blame, I must, f let me first fulfill myself, let me give it to myself and see if that helps. And of course, every time it does. So I just take it from me that um, make it simple and believe that you have it and see how things work in your world, as Neville always said. Um, just observe how it works. Believe you have it, though, and then make this an experiment and see what happens. And don't be shy with yourself. So um, back to detachment, what I was trying to say was that we must learn to um, let go of this external world um, dictating what you should imagine and allow yourself the freedom to have what you want regardless of... Um, of the external, what the external says, because the external is, will say a lot of labels, they'll throw a lot of labels on you, throw a lot of ideas, and you might not agree with them. But you remember, you are the I am that precedes all self-concepts. Knowing that, you don't have to feel unworthy of any self-concept because they're all made of the same substance. And you're the being that assumes the concept. Uh, meditate on that and contemplate on that. But yeah, I hope this helps.